What's going on guys? Welcome to Hugo Builds. This is gonna be episode one in our brand new series where we're building a brand new modern semi-detached in Ottawa, Canada, and I'm gonna show you how it's done. This episode is gonna focus on the excavation and the foundation and the backfill, so everything before the framing stage. As you can see behind me, the foundation is well underway. We are backfilling in a couple of days, and here's kind of all the headaches and challenges we faced. First things first, before we even started to excavate, we needed to tear down the original house that was on site. This was a small one bedroom house uh, on a big lot, the excavator did quick work of this. This took about one day and they just put that all into dumpsters and brought this thing to the dump. At the excavation stage, I would say the biggest challenge is we're dealing with the water. This whole foundation is in a blue clay, so it's really sticky, really muddy, and we just got terribly unlucky with the weather, so everything was muddy and hard to deal with. Another important thing to consider, and I'm guilty of this myself, is that us as architects design often to the uh, tightest setbacks. On this urban lot, we are four feet away from the property line. That makes it really difficult to excavate because you need some sort of slope so that your excavation doesn't fall in. And so that makes the excavation really tight. In a few spots, the excavation was a little too tight so we had to dig out by hand. In rainy conditions, I had a few pumps running at all times but we were collecting a lot of water in the bottom of this pit. Another major issue caused by all this rain was that the Excavation walls were starting to collapse in some places where some newer builds were backfilled kind of around the site with sand so that those excavation walls are a little less stable. We had a monsoon rain uh, a few days before the footing was supposed to go in so and some of the excavation collapsed we had you know yards and yards of dirt that needed to move in and since this was already excavated we couldn't get any more machinery in there so that was all done by uh, wheelbarrow and because it's so difficult to get laborers around these days uh, I did that all myself so that was a couple of weeks of real pain in the butt. After that we got lucky with a couple days of nice weather so we were able to use our pumps and get all the water out of the excavation. We got our geotechnical engineer on site to give us our soils test to confirm that our soil is good to bear this house. The whole thing won't sink into the ground. We also had the surveyor come on site and pin the location of the footing so we know exactly where things go. Based on these uh, pins, the foundation guys double check all the plans and they use these 2x8s to create forms for the footing. We have an 8 inch thick footing and it's 24 inches wide and that's going to support uh, the weight of this house. Once the footing is poured and the forms are removed, they put in what is called a weeping tile or a French drain. That's just a big pipe all along the perimeter of the foundation so that if any water accumulates around the footing, it has a clear path to get through. That goes to a pit in our mechanical room and is pumped out via a sump pump directly to the city sewer. Once the weeping tile is in place, they use this stone slinger, which is a big truck with a conveyor belt that shoots a clear stone, which allows water to flow freely around there and gather at the right spot. One thing that 
that I found super interesting is that this big slinger is all controlled by the guy with the yellow vest and he has a sort of video game remote controller and he's super accurate at directing that stone wherever he needs it. That notch that you see on top of the footing, that's called the key notch. It's made by dragging a shovel across the top of the footing in the wet concrete and that creates a locking mechanism so that the foundation wall doesn't move around on top of the footing in case of some seismic event. Guys, I'm at the site right now. It's another day that the foundation company hasn't showed up they say they're missing forms uh, I never thought that the foundation process would take so long when we built our house uh, you know up here uh, I feel like the whole foundation process was about a day so they did the footings uh, as soon as the footings were dried they stripped those forms they put the forms for the walls up they poured those waterproofed and they were good to go here we're almost a month into this process there's been a lot of rain they send out a crew to do the footing and then, uh, you know, we did the French drain real quick and essentially we've been waiting for uh, two weeks now to just get the walls up. So all we can do is just wait. We're kind of stalled at the moment. So yeah, hopefully the next slip is them actually putting the walls up tomorrow. <laughs> It is hot as hell today, you probably tell. I'm drenched, I've been here for a couple hours. Uh, it's really cool how they actually uh, do this stuff. It's just like a puzzle piece of all these kind of plywood forms that have uh, you know, this metal clip. You put in a couple ties at every board and you hammer it in. I'll show you guys how, uh, how he does it, but he's, uh, he's blind, so I'm just kind of helping him move some of these around. But uh, it's a good time, cool learning about this. a big boom truck everything just kind of clicks together and they have forms of all sizes you can see like that's a 12 inch right here all the standards I think are 24 and then just keep going measure and then fill in little pieces with a bunch of random filler sizes they have Hey guys, I hope you can hear me all right. It's a big day for us today. Finally, after weeks of waiting, the foundation forms are complete and they are pouring the foundation. So they are stripping all the forms out now. They're using the same truck that they brought them in. They just kind of rip them off the wall, uh, put those all these kind of plywood forms back in their cages, and then they, this huge hoist puts it onto that truck. This process takes uh, about a day, so it's really hot. Again, like yesterday, it's again 35 degrees Celsius, so these guys are working a little slower than usual, but uh, they're gonna get it done because the forms cannot stay on the concrete uh, too long or else the concrete starts to kind of corrode that um, you know, non-slip face that's on the, the surface of those forms. Once all those forms were stripped, we were ready for backfill. We brought in a bunch of trucks of sand and we filled in the garage. 
uh, and all around the foundation. We had some stockpile in the back, so we removed a couple fence panels through the back parking lot and used a mini X to push that against the foundation. Well guys, as you can see, I'm in the bottom of the pit. It looks a lot shallower than it did a couple of days ago because we had to bring up stone about two feet at the bottom of this because the slab is raised due to frost protection. In hindsight, that was probably not the right strategy to do this. We went deeper with the footing in order to avoid putting foam under the foundation, but all in all, that ended up being a huge headache. We had to excavate deeper, so there was more material to take out, there was more material to, to bring back in. The excavation was harder because, uh, you know, it was deeper. So if I had one piece of advice, try to limit your excavation and foundation to as shallow as you can. Uh, even if you're dealing with frost protection issues, like in this climate, uh, we have to go at least uh, six feet with the foundation walls with no frost protection. We could have gone about two feet and just put foam under the whole thing. Foam is really expensive, but at the end of the day, uh, I think we would have been ahead had we gone with the uh, foam under the slab. That said, this whole foundation and excavation process has been really challenging to say the least. Uh, I thought it was going to be a lot more straightforward, but we faced issues with the excavation, the weather, the timing. This ended up taking way longer than I thought. The house is coming along, but it did take a lot longer than expected. Framing is starting tomorrow. For now, this is going to be the end of the uh, foundation video. So if you enjoyed these videos, if you're excited for this series, please leave a comment down below. Don't forget to like this video and it really helps this channel if uh, you subscribe to our video. So I would really appreciate it if you guys can do that. Uh, that said, that's gonna be it. We'll see you in the next one. Peace.